Hello and welcome to the Eastern Kicks podcast, a regular magazine program about East Asian film led by me, Andrew Heskins, founder and grandmaster of EastonKicks.com, and James Mudge, our leading writer. Hey, up. Each episode, we'll be taking a look at the latest films, news, and festivals, often chatting to filmmakers and stars along the way. So welcome to the last show of the year. It's the end of the year show. And this episode, we're going to look back on 2022 and ask, what does it mean for Asian film and TV? Has anything changed? Is there any good news? <laughs> but before we get on with that, let's ask the most important question of all. What are you drinking this episode, James? <laughs> You'll be honest. Mad raccoon beer. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> late, late shift has got some kind of hip-hop raccoon on it, man. <laughs> yeah, your, your better half shared a picture of that. She was, yes, uh, she found yeah. us. She found us. She was very happy. But <laughs> really she, proud of finding it. she only bought me one, though. <laughs> <laughs> don't test the waters first, mate. You might, you might find you, you don't like it. Very, you? very unlikely. So, but I've also got um, Glenn <laughs> Marna. No, Glenn. Ah, I can't remember what it, which one it is. I've got it. I've got it. It's a Glenn. It begins with an M. But I've got that. I've got that with me. Uh, so I think it's Glenn Marna. So I've got whiskey after I have my one raccoon beer, which I will like. It's five point six percent. So it's. Pint sized can almost. Um. It's, a folly. It's, it's folly. It's a folly. It's a, it's a folly. Yeah. I, I'm just on the old leather blonde here. Fair enough. So uh, 6.6, as, as, as most of you probably out there know, if you're regular listeners. <laughs> it's a solid, it's a solid, a solid fallback. So let's get on with chatting about 2022. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, what were the big releases this year? Really much, was <laughs> no, no. I think that's what we're going to keep saying and coming back to during this chat is, is the pickings have been uh, incredibly slim. Uh, I think, for, particularly for, for when me. it comes to cinema, I think. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, I mean, I think there's there's, there's the, the one film that stands out is is Decision to Leave. Mm. Um, yeah, you know, and I think we were probably still had a little bit of at the beginning of the year probably had a little bit of the the release for for drive my car yeah yeah, Yeah. that's true um but not much but uh as far as cinema going goers go that's that's pretty much it there's really small releases for other films yeah Um, not much at all and it doesn't seem like it's uh, particularly good news in any way, shape, or form. So, Decision League yeah. has been picked up by Mubi, so it's had a, a a fairly limited, but not as limited as many other limited seminaries are nowadays. Um, very confusing. It was a very confusing release, I have to say. I don't think. I mean, I'm not going to go off on what against Mubi or anything because remember, like the, it was it was playing at what London Film Festival and stuff, right? Yes, but it had all these other like preview screenings. Uh, and then it had a sort of second. I think some of those screenings. were part of some of those were part of the London Film Festival as well because they do this thing where they take a couple of films and yeah. screen them in other cities that they they sort of but, but, started doing really particular. But that's post, what that's um, what yeah, but that's what confused yeah. me up here in Glasgow because we had the London Film Festival screenings and stuff up here, but we also had movie preview screenings up here <laughs> at the same time in different cinemas. So it was you know it was a GFT and it was at Cineworld. World. So I, I was really confused by it. And then it, of course, came out. And it's, like you say, like very limited release very soon after that as well. So I, yeah. I don't think... I don't know. I, I, it's an interesting one. And now it's, it's been, it's been on, uh, actually on the movie. It's on movie now. Platform for, for a while now. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But it's still... I don't know. I mean, this sort of tags into what, what happened with I'll Drive My Car as well. Like, you know, it was, it was playing the festivals. Then there was a, a massive gap. Um, and then it came out. Sorry, the very the opposite. Rather, there's a very short gap and stuff. And it was a massive gap to the Oscars, is what I was going to say and stuff. So, mm. I don't know when these films when you, when you're having like on the one hand like say like this is a BFI tour, which I think is a good idea. You know, taking some of the yeah. films to the festival, uh, not just Asian films, anything like around the country. Yeah, yeah, that's it's great. Headline films, definitely. Yeah, 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 for sure. But trying to build actual release around it because the BFI. The BFI don't don't do a great job with promotions anyway, as we know. So you're not piggybacking onto any big benefits, and if anything, and also, you're losing your audience. And that, and that's the problem, and that is kind of inherent in the the, the London Film Festival as well. That the yeah. films, you know, they either you know you get the films that aren't going to turn up mm. at all, yeah, um, or you know might turn up in a year's time, mm-hmm. or you get the ones that are coming out, and if the, like 
like within a few weeks, which yes. kind of makes the whole. You know, we've discussed this before on the program. <laughs> it does make the, does make the festival. I, mean, I don't. I don't want to use the word pointless, but you know, if you if you have got uh, you know quite expensive tickets, um, yeah. fine. You might have a gala where you've got the director there and the yeah. cast members there, which is which is great. But you also know that actually next week it's coming out at uh, your city world. So yeah, yeah, for sure. I didn't... And that's you know, that's on your membership. So well, no, I, I agree. I, I don't I don't see the point um, so, so much of it. Um, like you say, unless there's a, it's a very specific. You know, if it's coming out a week later, but you've got the director there, the cast there, you've got some Q and A's. That I mean, sure. I mean. Still wouldn't pay the, the London Film Festival prices, but I, I can see a point to that. But for a lot of these films, there just there just isn't. And when you're mixing in, like in this case, you know, actual preview distributor preview screenings, you mm-hmm. know, as well at the same time before the release, it probably screened just as much before it released, after it released. You yeah, know, yeah. Which I, I, I didn't I, get I, at I, all. That doesn't that doesn't make sense to me, and it does. It, it feels a bit like the the. The distributor and and the BFI not not chatting to each other. It about feels very much that. like that. Very, no, no, I, I can. <laughs> Where it could have, agree. it could actually have been, you know, maybe one of them needed to go take a step back and go, well, okay, well, well, you know, if you're the distributor, it's probably cheaper to let BFI put it out there and just yeah, yeah, put yeah. It in a few more places and keep it as a, a London film festival. No, I, I agree. Preview and theirs, rather than try and do the same. It's a strange one, one obviously, because <laughs> because movies like not movie's not VOD either it's you know it's a subscription service so if it was a VOD one it would kind of make more sense to me because then people you know you would could just be renting you could do the whole thing at the same time then you know there's a lot of things do yeah. day and date yeah. for, v- yeah. for VOD yeah. and um, uh, and limited cinema that, that makes more sense I, I, you know that kind of model you know that kind of has been proven to work a lot more whereas having mm-hmm. it out coming out like a week in the cinema basically so basically we have about three weeks of previews in London we have about a week to two weeks at max of like film screenings of actual release then two weeks later we have it on a subscription service um don't i don't really get it because mo- most of the people who subscribe to movie are, are more like on the, the the sort of slightly cinephile side and stuff so they're probably going to want it to watch it in the cinema anyway and is it yeah i mean put it i i get getting around to talking about the film itself i mean i i haven't seen it uh, and even i haven't i couldn't even be bothered taking it a free trial to movie to watch it so uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm representative of anything in particular, but you would think, you, you know, I'd be a particular, you would think I'd be a target as, as you know, sort of an Asian film fan. And that. So I'm not, I mean, you've seen it. I, I'm not sure why, yeah, I, all yeah. I'm saying is that I'm not sure why I just, nah, uh, why I couldn't care less about it. I mean, I'm not sure why I have that we, feeling. I mean, before we kind of talk about um, the film, yeah. Uh, I think it might be worth kind of sticking with. Well, I mean, and I, and I really don't know what 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 a success, yeah. what a vaguely successful mm. domestic release is, you know, in terms of the cinema in the UK. And I know that it does change a lot between um, how much distributors are paying for a yeah. film, um, you know, and how much the film costs to make. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, so where you've got things like, and, and I, uh, my figures are all in. Um, you know, the thing is, I found rule in dollars. Um, mm. So uh, the American listeners will will know what I'm talking about. But for British <laughs> listeners, you will have to uh, convert those into pounds to to have more of an idea. But um, you know, so for instance, uh, something like Black Adam might you know worldwide be getting 390 million US dollars. You know, mm. that's, that's the kind of it's it's gross takings. Um, which, because the sort of film is, it is, it's not enough to, yeah, you know, they, they basically can. It's a, it's a flop, yeah, because it costs so much to make and to market. Yeah, it, it probably costs more to market. market than more to market than it actually costs to make. It's crazy. Marketing <laughs> yeah. costs are, are insane now. And and in, in interesting, I mean, that will come back into uh, decisions to leave. So I think mm. a lot of lot of uh, yeah, listeners in the UK and you know, across the UK will have seen the advertising in. In magazines, or seeing the posters in, yeah, in you know, yeah. London in tube stations, and and so on and so forth. It's it's been it was very very widely marketed, definitely. You know, but it's it's the the UK growth for um, uh, the the figure that I found um, was just over seven hundred and fifty thousand. That's more that's more than I thought it would have been. To be honest, I'm quite. I mean, I I, I have a very I have a rough idea how much they paid for it and stuff, but. Um, I, I'm not sure what, what they would have spent on um, 
marketing like P&A and everything but I, yeah. that's, that's actually better I mean compared to well we know drive my car didn't exact drive my car <laughs> made you know several factors less than that with, without you know putting it politely um, it really didn't really didn't do well um, so, so, so yeah I mean 750,000 is actually pretty good for a foreign language for a foreign language film in the UK and stuff but I'm very so I'm so surprised to hear that figure because it it really had a limited number of screenings so I wonder yeah I'm just I'm just very surprised mm-hmm. as to what actually gets included in that included in that figure because that's more than like quite a few normal commercial um, you know actual commercial films um make and and it's still it's not even that long since it was actually on release so no that's i mean it's interesting uh i mean the figure i had i mean let's take it back a couple of years the figure i had for about for um parasite was 14 over 14 and a half million not in the uk you mean uh, in the uk that's 14 million that's the figure i found i mean i think it got a couple of releases thanks to the I, mean, I don't know how accurate the film I found. This was. Uh... Uh, sorry, I, I'm actually just flicking through stuff <laughs> mm-hmm. at the same time. For, but I'm not going to look at Paris. Yeah, you're right. I mean, Paris it did get multiple releases and stuff, so um, mm-hmm. it is it, it is quite possible. Um, you know, and and then I've, I've just got a few comparatives, comparative mm-hmm. comparisons here. So, um, Hunt, yes, uh, the Korean film. Um, the figure I found for UK was um, oh no actually I don't have a figure for UK that's interesting okay um, but it did get a limited release so maybe it didn't really figure um, I've got some other figures here so mm-hmm. um, so to kind of talk about some of these smaller releases that are that that, that are coming out now mm-hmm. like uh, uh, you know we, we will come on to this in a bit you know with some of the Hong Kong films but they're mm-hmm. getting a UK distribution like Table for Six yeah which I've got a figure of um, $84,000 okay I mean that's that's pretty you, and then far you know, far away getting 13 nearly 14000 US dollars yeah which is I mean, it's, it's weird to talk about UK Kingdom in uh, the UK yeah. in, uh, United Kingdom in, in terms of dollars but uh well, that's, 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 that's the world. That's, that's the world we live in. Everything. That's where we're, everything's cold dollars. in dollars. <laughs> um, yeah, it used to be worth a few more pounds, but obviously, mm. at today's rates, uh, not so many. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, what what do you think? I mean, I'm quite interested. I don't know if you have an answer, but what what does that mean for a for a for a domestic release? And just I I mean, we don't have the answer to this, but I would be very interested to dig down into that. Um, uh, or a decision to leave figure and see what's actually coming under that side. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was on some other VOD, or maybe move, maybe there's something else being included in there from the movie side of it because it did. It, it didn't play that wide. It really did not play wide. I mean, put it this way: Glasgow is quite a big market for this stuff, and it was it had one screening a one screening a day at like nine o'clock. No, two screenings a day for the first week at like seven o'clock and half nine. At the midsummer run, the second week it had like two or three screenings, so it really didn't. It had a very limited release, so I mean, that's I mean, it's, I'm happy and I'm glad to see any film playing that much money. I just I would not have guessed you, you were going to say that it was that much and everything. Um, so maybe maybe there's some other differences in the way they're actually calculating it. But I'd say that's I mean, just taking it at face value, I'd say that's a pretty it's a pretty impressive figure. Um, I, I I would imagine they actually made some money off it um, in that case because for that kind of film, they probably did have BFI support for the. Um, for the marketing, and everything you can get, mm. you can get certain um, grants, you know, towards your your marketing distribution budget. So they, I assume they probably did get something for that. So but that that the, yeah, that that is an impressive figure. But I, I, for the other ones um, you mentioned, they're like the Hong Kong ones. I don't understand the don't understand that at all. Uh, to be honest, I mean, having worked with companies who will remain nameless. Uh, and, and everything, even for a point when you weren't necessarily buying a film, but you were still covering all distribution, marketing costs, staffing costs, everything like that, you really needed to hit at least 50k, at least 50k to not lose money. So, you know, and, and that was a few years ago, so it's probably more than that now. So, even for something like Table of Six, they're hitting 80k. Um, actually, I don't, well, it's, and that's in dollars as well, so it probably is about 55, mm-hmm. 60k. So, that's, I don't understand it. I'm very, I'm very intrigued by that, to be honest. Because if, 
uh, there's been a few of these films coming out, and some of, I'm sure some of the other ones have, have, have achieved lower figures um, than those ones as well from Hong Kong. I mean, some of the, the like Blue Island or whatever it's called and stuff. Some of the other ones have been going around. I'm sure they're making lower, yeah, I, lower uh, bank as well. The but. figure I had for that was uh, less than six thousand. Well, there, yeah, it doesn't yeah. surprise. No, no, exactly. It doesn't surprise. Surprise. No. doesn't surprise at all. So if you if you even if you add those together and stuff, but. Um, com- I guess maybe companies are now pursuing like different uh, business models for, for these mm-hmm. things, like not necessarily having um, as high a exposure or a risk in terms of not having so many, not having staff, not having offices. Maybe sh- sharing stuff more with the cinemas, so they're sort of reducing their risk. Maybe sharing then the money with the people back, you know, in Hong Kong, the production companies. So mm. it's yeah, it, it could. It could be done in a variety of different ways. It still just seems like a lot of effort to to me if it's not actually... So the, the flip side to that is if it's not bringing much money, it means not many people are seeing it. And that's really the point where I don't see the point. Yeah. You know, if you, if you have some... And I'm sure there are... You know, no, no one's going to be losing money on, on release as well. Some companies do because they're pretty thick. But um, if people aren't actually even watching the films and you're not reaching that many people, then that's that's where I don't really get it. So it's very interesting. Where you know, they're at the very top end of the scale. We have that then decision to leave with a surprisingly big figure, and whether or not that does have some link into like movie's own gross from the film, like um, you, you know, who knows in terms of subscription, subscription clicks and <laughs> yeah. things that wouldn't wouldn't surprise me. But either way, it's getting out there. You know, it's getting watched and stuff. Mm. So so, whatever the complexities of the financial model are. Uh, it would seem on the surface to represent a success in terms of people actually seeing it and, and pushing, you know, a large part of that for them will be pushing the movie the movie brand. So it, I imagine part of it's an investment in keeping them going and like getting these yeah, yeah. prestige titles and stuff. So for them, I, I I would imagine that represents a pretty good pretty good success by the sound of it. Uh, yeah. You know, compared to stuff like, you know, Drive My Car, which was not a success in the least um, and didn't really even... Help the film company in question, <laughs> modern modern films. But um, you know, <laughs> I'm kind of joking. It's it, it's it, you know, I, I do appreciate it's awkward t- timing for these things, and they're a much smaller distributor than, than someone like Movie, who has a lot of money behind them. So, um, but yeah, there's a, there's a huge gap there for, from the from the really low sort of fifty thousand pound and below up to these ones, which then which are retrieving slightly more closer to like a commercial. You know, a, a non foreign language or non Asian East Asian film would. Mm. So it's, it is it is interesting, and it, but also I guess the results are so skewed because there's been so few things actually in the cinema. You know, if we had about twenty films to compare takings across, you know that that would be. Mm. We, we I mean, I, 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 I know it does. It yeah, it does feel like we've got into a stage where really, you know, we are lucky to get one. Yeah, major Asian release mm-hmm. in cinemas. Um, you and we get all these other minor ones. Yeah, that kind of chip yeah. away. But that, but that, that is really it. You know, I mean, and the minor and the minor uh, ones are, are are very niche markets to you know niche audiences, on purpose. Like the Hong Kong ones are only or it is it's the way that these Hong Kong ones in the UK and we'll talk about Hong Kong cinema in a bit. But just in terms of the UK side of it, I mean, the films are not being marketed in English language. They're only being pushed to. Uh, you know the a specific demographic, which is completely fair enough. But there's whereas then compare that to like say the decision to leave, um, which is every bit the sort of can, not can blockbuster, but sort of can poster put can poster film um, type of thing, which people will probably go and see it just because it, you know it's got the can is, logo on it. It, it is. Is it, a, is it a point just to kind of talk about my feelings about decision to leave? Yeah, yeah, do do because as yeah. I say, I've not I've not seen it. <laughs> Jogi, Jogi. Yeah, 
I, I mean, off off the podcast, we James and I have have spoken about this. But, mm. um, yeah, I'm. I was not a fan of decision to leave. I think my uh, rather throwaway comment at the end of my review, I've, and I still feel the same way, was rather like Tenacious G. It's mm. a tribute. It's <laughs> not the song itself. Um, and we all, many of you will probably be aware of the fact that it is a, it is a very big homage um, <laughs> to uh, Hitchcock and, and Vertigo, which was, and we'll come on to this later in the programme as well, was until very recently, uh, one of the, BF, the, <laughs> the, uh, the top spot of the uh, BFI's 100 Greatest Movies of all, Films yes, of All Time. Yes, yeah. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about it. It's It's got everything that Park chan does, mm. but also everything he's done before much better. I, In terms of enjoying the film, it's just stuff full of devices. There's nothing, mm. there's a lot of visual stuff in there. It's very creative, but there's so many la- overlapping layers of this, <laughs> these devices that it oh. it becomes, seem, it feels very convoluted and confusing, but it's actually a very, very simple story. Um, and a very, very simple story that's not a million miles away from, from uh, some of the Vertigo. Um, and, and, and it deliberately has all these, these scenes on, on from the top of cliffs and the top of uh, buildings and so on. Um, and it, it it just doesn't it there's, there's, it's just so much in your face that I I, I just did not in, I just didn't enjoy it that much and I did not buy into I mean you've got a couple of stars in there I got a couple of actors but I did not buy into that that as a as a romantic right okay part does, of, does she does she speak Korean in it yes she does right, but right, then right. she's she's married to a Korean, yeah, yeah, oh, no, no, she's, been, she's been in a couple of other Korean films before and stuff. So. But also, she, they, yeah. there's this device in there um, where she uses a telephone translator for some stuff that she allegedly can't say in, in Korean. So she does speak Korean, but also speaks in okay. Mandarin as well. Right, right, right. Uh, over two hours? I mean, it's, there's some interest in it. Over two hours? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and, and, and to the state where uh, there's so much packed into it, I wouldn't be surprised if there will be like, oh, a handmade God. extended cut down the road as well. Oh, Lord. Um, but everything you're saying just... Uh, just, just on the lines where I, 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 I have I a problem. I do have a problem with with this because you know, like you, you kind of talk, talk about it being that sort of like yeah, it's a can. It's like that, that, yeah. you know that the, you you're supposed. I mean, and, and I do feel it's one of those things. That I definitely feel like you know a, a bit of Emperor's New Clothes about it. Uh, mm. I, I wonder why there's a lot of people that really really love it, and you know, yeah. if you're one of those people listening to this program. I don't mean to offend you, but mm. I I just don't get it. I just don't get it because if you want to. There are lots of other films of, of Park Chan Wooks I would actually choose to watch again. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I have much more of. A, I, I buy into the the romance, or you know, and like a lot of them, this is this is you know, it's going to be quite a tragic romance. I hope that's not a spoiler for you, but you know, it's based on Vertigo. What did you expect? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I buy into the relationship in first. You know. Yeah, that's or, a you know, If I want to watch, you know, if I want to, you know, I, I think when we talked about it, you know, that that there's a there's a very kind of quick level. From Park Chan Wook's early films, you know, through GSA to Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance, and it's, yeah, most yeah. of it's been pretty much downhill ever since. And Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance is still, I think, yeah, that's my his, favorite. His, yeah, yeah his, his best film. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. My so favorite, where you get this, so. this, 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 this applause for this, and, and then the, the, there's a lot of movies that kind of quotes movies, yeah, in a sort of way. Then you get this, and it's it's come out of the sort of cans part of it, and then they get applauded in things like the guardian and so on and so of course forth. yeah um and and they, they you they're kind of force fed to you with the films that you should should love in a sense and and i and i like to say i'm, I'm like I, I i don't i actually don't get it i and i, I do think if you are a, a fan of a, you know you have watched a reasonable amount of park chan Wook films i'd be very surprised if if this would be anywhere near the top but I, I mean part of me wonders it's as just, well just, it's, he's just doing the same stuff that he's done no no I, I mean everything you're saying I exactly uh, you know the reasons why I haven't bothered watching it, I don't feel anything about it which even if it was on Netflix I, I probably wouldn't bother to be honest which is quite sad in a way but I mean so much of this is kind of indicative a bit of just the state of Korean cinema though I mean it's really you know we'll, go, we'll talk about any trends or lack thereof later but it seems like another sort of classic three star I'd get from my OGS Asia date sent to me, you, you know, which is handsome. Oh, that's always the word I use: handsome production values. Everything about it is well done, but you're just kind of at the end like, okay, yeah. but now 
everything is over like two hours 15 so it's worse yeah, yeah. but it, it just looks exactly like that kind of i'm sure it is handsome you know immaculately yeah, yeah. constructed and whatnot but i and, and it's definitely uh, i do feel like there is the uh, we are seeing this sort of chase of of the success of parasite um yeah, which yeah. Is, has it has in many respects in terms of a, a work from a direct uh, what a dr- just I don't really quite want to use the word repeating, but mm-hmm. continuing to look at the same, the same themes in their work. I do think Parasite is a much, much better film than The Decision to Leave, which might shock you even more, um, <laughs> knowing how you feel about it. But yeah. we've also seen um, this is being followed because we got the Japanese director Hirakazu uh, Kurira, um, yeah, doing Broker. Yeah, yeah. With, didn't, with some, with, with, which is, is is actually only released in the UK. Uh, in February, from Pitch House. Because they're hoping for the Oscars, I guess. And they're hoping to be in, in there um, somewhere. And again, I'm afraid, is is just the director doing everything they've done before. You know, in this time, <laughs> um, he's doing it with a Korean cast like Song Kang Ho from Parasite. Ah, that's right, yeah. Um, it's got the, I think it's got the cinematographer from Parasite. It's got the composer from Parasite. Oh, Christ, okay. Um, who's actually can be very good. Oh, no, yeah, I, I, don't mean, I don't mean not good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tying into a, the same old stuff, yeah. But, it, I mean, here it's a very kind of a twee, piano-y kind of soundtrack, which oh. I don't I don't know... I mean, and again, we can come on to this in a bit, but, I, I mean, maybe we talk about this, you know, because we all kind of mentioned this film anyway, but I... That, to me, didn't feel like a very Corrida kind of a, a, a way that he used to use music. Okay. It felt like it was a bit forced by the studio. So you, you do wonder how much of this is, uh, because it's a Korean production, is, is the studio forcing certain <sighs> aspects to it. But there's, there's, no. there's not enough to the, the storyline and plot um, to kind of lift it from just coming off as a bit simplistic, way too simplistic in places. And, and you've got mm. great performances, yeah. um, but it's still following it does feel like there is a bit uh, of this kind of following yeah. and 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 i think the 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 a part of that has got to be and we've discussed it on this program before you know mm. and, and what the squid games and that yeah um is people aren't actually getting that what people what one of the things that people really got parasite out there was the fact that it's it's not about the it's not about cinema it's about it's about music it's about k-pop yeah. And that love of, of of culture, I don't, yeah. I don't think there's that 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 the one is helping the other, but people are not mm-hmm. seeing. I, I think it's 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 the the the, the omnipresence of K-pop yeah. and BTS yeah. who are or, you know, or, now retiring for a bit, and now they're doing their their their, their service. <laughs> but, um, they'll, they'll stop being sissy you know, men then. <laughs> then, um, as a certain a certain person would put it, yeah. um, you know, it, 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 I, I think people are actually kind of missing out on the fact that what is what a great part of that is is being propelled by I, absolutely. music. No, no, yeah. I, absolutely. It, it's just the ongoing and. In some ways, I think film is the least of it. I think, yeah, music's at mm. the top, then TV. That's what I'm trying and, to And yeah. then probably yeah. Korean food. Um, so not really <laughs> Korean booze too much. Um, yeah, I, I think yeah. Korean films are, are down the bottom of the list of what's actually doing it. So, you're, I mean, you're, and you're right. It's, that's a, a very large part of what pushed on Parasite. And, you know, what, I mean, Squid Game was very high concept, but it also had, you know, it kind of worked on different levels and stuff. But, um, yeah, for, for other ones, yeah, it's... It's a Korean culture wave, you know. It's not like a Korean cinema wave, uh, definitely. I mean, it's. I I don't think a lot of yeah. the other. We're. I mean, Korea is still continuing to churn out um, very large amounts of films uh, every year, as they always do, because you know they have a fantastic government su- sort of support structure, um, and mentoring structures, and production funding structures. But I actually think less films are making it out, uh, maybe, maybe certainly than they were in, in the early two thousands, but. Uh, even compared to just sort of pre-COVID times. And a lot of them were coming out, whether it's just like DVD releases or uh, straight to streaming stuff. I actually think for films, not for TV, TV still, you know, going very, uh, very strong, but th- there's not many films which are actually making it out in a, in a, in a meaningful, uh, yeah, in a very meaningful yeah. way. Uh, and, and I think... I mean, you're... once in a... I, I, I just kind of... I mean, we should come on to this because mm. I think that, 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 you know, when we talk about some of the other key releases of this yeah. year, yeah. you know, most of those are, particularly in the UK, <clears throat> uh, have just come out on streaming. One I, cinema release I, I forgot to mention, mm. uh, and I, think, I believe this was from our good friends Modern Films, was mm. Return to Dust. 
Oh, of course, that, that, yeah, that's true. Which was a, was was kind of making the circles of the festival film at sort of the tail end of last year, beginning of this year, and then it did come out, but again, it, it not in a particularly <laughs> meaningful I, I way. Know, I know the even though I mean, it, and, and actually, most of the publicity plot. was about the the fact yeah. that um, it it had proved very popular in mainland China, and then uh, yeah, that's going uh, to so very gonna... quickly uh, pulled. Yeah, no, I, I know that that completely flatlined as well. Uh, the the box office that was another complete no I'm going to say disaster because it wasn't exactly expensive but um, yeah that that was another another flop because um, well without putting too fine a point on it it just wasn't targeted properly mm. you, you know to audiences we saw you know you know without getting into too, not saying anything positive or negative about it some of the some of the organizations and things that they were doing quite random posts with were, were very very odd fits for the kind of audience which would have worked for return to i don't think it would have been very popular anyway to be honest but i think some of the people some of the some of the like the promotion like people, that can break out and make an audience with the sort of lefty yeah, tour, you know, bfi yeah, south yeah, banky yeah. type you know tour it around stuff with it yeah, yeah. It, it definitely yeah there, there is no, not a big audience but there is there, there would have been a way to do a lot better with it uh, as I say, like even uh, at the start, like a large part of this is just not so much the numbers themselves because we don't really know what they translate into in terms of deals. But even just as a vague reflection of how many people are actually seeing it, like nobody, nobody watched Return to Dust. You know, we we can say that quite quite easily. The same as some of these Hong Kong films, nobody's watching um, because if they did, there would be at least some other kind of spike for them. And these are films which are not really having. You know, streaming releases as well. Um, a lot of the time, they, they probably will at some point. They'll, or they'll go on Amazon. You know, they'll be available via someone, some, you know, like Curzon's play, Curzon player or somewhere. You you rent them for like twenty five quid or something stupid like that. But um, I don't know. yeah, it, it's a shame because they really have not. There really have been very very few other ones, East Asian films, which have actually made it into, um, in, into cinemas. And you know, we obviously. You, we have COVID as a major factor in that, both in terms of some slowing of production, well, mainly from China, from other countries, not mm. so much now, but in terms of maybe UK um, cinema going habits. I mean, we know like foreign films, foreign language films skew very heavily towards older uh, older audiences who have maybe not been so rushed to, to head back to cinemas and everything. Cost of living crisis. I mean, I've, you know, mm-hmm. ranted so many times about places like Curzon, and like charging like twenty something a ticket in some cases and everything. You know, for their central London or or their Richmond cinemas, yeah, yeah. they're incredibly expensive. Picture House Central. I mean, would you, in this day and age, if you're, you're really going to be paying like eighteen twenty quid to to go and see, uh, you know, film? Mm, I don't, I don't know. And maybe that's where the decision to leave is a is sort of slightly more immune because of the can factor. It, you know, it, yeah. it it's not a random watch for people. That that's for your sort of. Well, to do Guardian reader who let you know, let's go and see, let's go and see the big, the, you know, the can success. Whether or not it's an Asian film probably doesn't make any difference to them, which is fine. I'm not even saying that in like a bad way and stuff. I mean, that's kind, of, that's why you know you get this can boost, which kind of varies from year to year whether it actually boosts films. But um, something like Decision to Leave as well is probably in a quite unique position, just in that it made a huge amount of money in Korea anyway. So, you know, in, for the actual producers of the film, and actually from they're, you know, anything which they get from any deals internationally is just, not, it's more like the, the Korean culture boost and stuff there, yeah. you, know, product, you know, more profile boosting. I don't think the money internationally um, would, would matter as much, given that it's been a big success at home. So, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a poor, it's been a poor time. Yeah, for, yeah, for and, and that's kind of, yeah, the, the other... Major, yeah, the the key releases that we've we've had this year, yeah, um, most of which have had little or no kind mm. of cinema presence whatsoever, yeah, um, which include things like um, Warriors of Future, yeah, that's um, a very good yeah. film, um, The Roundup, yes, that's right, it's, it's pretty good, it's pretty good, it's yeah. just getting confused with the first one, I think. We had to have a couple back and forth of fact checking on my review <laughs> because different places were just listing it. In one way or the other, and because it was the same people, but yeah, it wasn't pretty good though. Yeah, pretty which part two, the other one, which I, I haven't <laughs> de- delved into that. Uh, we have Incantation, yeah. um, Satan Slaves Two, or Satan Slaves Communion. I think is the, the other. I think I think officially it's Satan Slaves Communion. Yeah, Communion. yeah, that's good. Um, 
uh, I guess in there, I mean, it did, like I did mention it before, but we had Hunt, which was trying to build off of the Lead Stars. Uh, yes, yes. Lee Jin Jung, Jin Jung um, uh, his uh, role in Squid Game, mm-hmm. but didn't really develop into anything. Which is, <laughs> no, it really didn't. That, that was another massive surprise. Not a very well thought out marketing campaign, to be honest, but there you go. Um, yeah, another festival films which we might see more of, um, uh, which uh, was uh, Next Ohi, which I have to say I really, really, really love. But yeah, they do know. Again, um, and, and in both Next Ohi and Broker, was another film that, that screened at a few festivals. Um, yeah. They do know plays a, a police officer, uh, which is. Yeah, I they, don't know. You're, you're wait years for Bay to, to play a police <laughs> officer, and then you know two of them turn up at once. Yeah, much much better than Broker by by a long shot. Well, um, I have no interest in Broker whatsoever. I did I did like Next Week. I didn't like it nearly as much as I liked Girl at My Door, but it's it's still it's still uh, it's a good film. Next Week. It's just a bit narratively blunt. Um, yeah, I did. I don't. I don't mind that though. And no, no, I, I still enjoyed I, it. I, I, we, we, I, we've talked about it in yeah. the past, and, and, and there's something there strange very good about the, 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 the kind of the repetition of it, yeah. rather than actually dealing with it all at one time and kind of flashback. But I do not mind that approach. I still like. No, no. Bit. I think I, I gave it a good four star review, which I definitely stand, stand by. Yeah. I'd be. I don't. You know, I haven't of, heard anyone's got it for the UK, which I'm surprised by. Um, yeah, I would have think there would be enough about it to, to at least do some sort of limited release or a movie, a movie getting it or something for streaming. Um, maybe they, maybe they have and it's just not been properly announced. But but that's definitely that's definitely one of the it's got to be one of the the best Korean films of the uh, of, of the year, year. I yeah. think. I mean, yeah. I, I prefer yeah. I did prefer yeah. the Witch part too, but um, that's but that's sort of more like a genre, like, you know, preference for genre. Um, you know, as much as anything else, because the, yeah. the, the which part one is excellent. The two of them are fun. They're just—it's a shame because they're stupid titles. They, they probably don't get, haven't been as seen widely as you know. They and there was quite a have. gap between them as well. A big so, gap, yeah. It was random. And, and, and sometimes the which part one wasn't called the which part true. one. True, that's also and true. It was a bit unsure because it was the, the witch even, subvert. Yeah. One of them was called subversion. Yeah, I think that's the first one. Wasn't it? Jesus, it was the witch sub. Ugh. Anyway, but they're good, very good film uh, for a genre. Way, and it's good to see. You know they're still churning out those kind of films. Uh, you, you know, so hopefully we will see more of them and more of them get. You know, and if people are not cinemaing them, then just going to um, going straight to streaming. Whether it's someone like Shudder or whoever picking them up for a genre platform. Um. So yeah, and speaking of genre, but not uh, another film that was doing rounds on the festivals. Shin Ultraman. <laughs> Very a lot of fun. <laughs> That's a good film. I man. didn't see. It. Is, is it is it as as talky as Shin Godzilla? No, it's less talky than Shin Shin Godzilla. It's still it's still like a two hour film, which it really really shouldn't be. Um, and it it does replicate a lot of the flaws of the those thing you know the actual series or the, or the films and stuff where you forget how talky they are. But it isn't as talky as Shin Godzilla. It is it it is more fun. I mean, I still like Shin Godzilla though, but I, this is better. This is actually. Creeping towards being good in a vaguely proper film way, and not just sort of nostalgia, kind of funny, updated with good special effects. I thought that that was a nice film. It's not not been in the UK though, has it at all? Sin Ultraman? Not that I know of. Not that I know of. No, so well, not in a meaningful way. Then at least we can say it's definitely not been released. I don't think it played at any festivals. Um, so in the and, UK, yeah, yeah, in the UK, it's certainly because it, which is weird because it played so many others. Um, um, obviously, but it's that, that was a, that was a nice film, man. It, it's good to see those kind of things still being, still being churned out. Uh, and there is obviously a, on the international festival circuit, there's still a lot of hunger uh, for those kind of genre, you know, those sort of wacky genre ones and everything, which is quite cool. And I mean, one other one that's that's making the rounds, um, and it's going to continue to make the rounds because I think it's going to be at Interfe- International Film Festival Rotterdam. Um, is uh, now I'm trying to remember what it's called now. But what was <laughs> Fear of Ambitions by Philip Young, um, and had been ho- has been hovering uh, around for what, the... about four or five years now. Christ. Um, and when the wind blows, now, where the wind blows, I think where the wind blows. When or when? When, 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 when is when is the uh, the the thing? But 
based on the uh, the um, the, the uh, um, cartoon animation, uh, I believe. Where oh. the wind blows, I think is what it's called. Okay, but yeah, it's still one. I really want to see. That. I know. I know. Obviously, it's been re. I don't know if it was reshot, but it was re-edited. So, um, no idea what version is playing. Uh, I d- I really want to see it. There's always a bit of trepidation knowing it's in a different version, but I would still, you know, I'd still watch it anyway, just just to just to see because it's another one where it was passed for everything. It was literally pulled on the on the, the day it was supposed to have screened uh, originally, although a few a couple of years ago. So it's yeah, it's a shame. Uh, it's still floating <laughs> floating around, and we'll see if that you know it's not a great time for for festivals uh, so just in terms of like the timing for the calendar and stuff because it's played other ones so it's not going to go to a lot of the major ones uh, so after Rotter I mean not Rotterdam's probably it's good that it's in Rotterdam um, but you know that's a bit of a gap to get to London Film Festival it's a bit of a you know yeah. we're working just in terms of the festival calendar um, <laughs> if it gets through we're probably some of the best we're probably in the best position to try and play it to be honest because uh, you know, by the time it comes to like October for any of the other you know, the sort of UK festival season that's going to be way past day, unless somebody picks it up yeah. and releases it, of course, whether or not anyone sees it. But I, I think that would be, as far as uh, the director goes, he's got no track record. I mean, we both yeah. like Port of Call. Yes, but yeah. That never, that's never come over here. No, at, that's at true. All. Yeah, true, at true. All, at all. Um, so kind of moving on, I mean, I think we've, we've talked about a lot of the trends. So I think, yeah. The, the career is, is kind of still still a big thing. Um, you know, we talked about the fact that there's not much coming from mainland China. Um, At all. For, I mean, it's not going to be... For, for, for very the, obvious. For, or, or for the foreseeable, I think. Yeah. I don't think you we're going to see much. Um, a few indies there is maybe, a, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, there's a... In there, and I guess, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it is a, a mainland Chinese film. There is, of course, uh, the documentary about Hong Kong, Spring Seeing Hong Kong Again. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, which screened at Cannes and yeah. the won a Prague uh, Film Festival. Um, okay, yeah. Although you won't find any uh, really much evidence <laughs> of that at all. It's amazing what you can find on, on the, the internet. History, it seems, is not written by the winner, but by the person with the best SEO. But yeah, we're not seeing much of, of, of stuff like that. I mean, no. is there anything else big on the horizon from... From mainland? I mean, the problem, with, the problem with mainland China is that people are not actually announcing films are coming out until the day they release them because they're too scared of them getting uh, cancelled. Uh, I know, I mean, there's that. I mean, the, the COVID thing's been such a massive thing as well. So um, I think we have a production shortage of films, uh, of comm- the kind of commercial films which have, which had been, you know, to be honest, are pretty... Piss poor, but had been doing well at the Chinese box office pre, pre, and um, you know a few years before running up to COVID, where they were starting to have less in the way of you know Hollywood films dominating the box office. There was a lot more very specific um, CCP approved like local content, um, but you know production has been completely decimated there for the last while mm. due to COVID and stuff, and that's kind of coupled with very very unsure period for censorship there. Um, at the moment so people are, so even like when I was doing some you know I was doing an article for Chinese New Year that there's nothing uh, apart from The Wandering Earth 2 that's the only one uh, and there will be other films coming for Chinese Year definitely they just won't announce they're coming out until a couple of days before so they can try and rush into rush into cinemas rather than going through the going, I, I think it's a mixture of like the scrutiny and also all it as we know it just takes one cast member to, to say on Weibo one tiny wrong thing about anything and mm. then the film is, is effectively banned so yeah, um, yeah. It, it's a very it's a tough it's going to be very a tough and interesting period for, for mainland cinema in the next next couple of years as they come out of COVID I'm very interested to see if it just sort of tries to plow on with these kind of very local uh, you know local blockbusters which, which is completely fair enough you, you know they don't have any reliance upon international money because nobody cares about them outside China but whether or not they're going to stick to that or whether we're going to go back to where we were maybe like five, eight years ago where they were trying to make films which would have some kind of international appeal or at least, a, you know, on, on the surface level to, to try a bit of soft power through uh, global cinema. I'll be interested to see where they go. With, yeah, well, I mean, that's, with that's kind of shut off at the moment. It is, so it is very, very much. In all sorts of ways. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, I mean, Hong Kong cinema, we've... Mm. Uh, 
I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, documentaries this year. Um, yeah. Are we seeing too many? I think so. Um, I, I, okay, put it this way, from an audience perspective, I think so. From from a point of view of actual historical record, no, no, no. I, I think you can have you could have a, the, you could never have too many. It's just as a point of historical record of actually you know cataloging events. I think that it's incredibly important to have all these films existing from a commercial point of view for audiences. Yeah, that definite o- oversaturation, and uh, that's just down to I, I think uh, you know we had a couple of sort of very big quite big sort of successes and then uh, of or at least for like one or one off screenings or like you know where you or you get then they suddenly sort of bulge into like 10 screenings all sold out which was great but then that kind of the knock-on effect was some distributors coming a bit late to the game uh, picking Mm. stuff up and releasing and finding by then people had you know not moved on but i think a lot of these films have very quickly become available online through you know not I want to say dodgy channels because they're being put out. It's not piracy. It's just making them available. It's for because that's the point for these things is to actually get a message out there and to be seen. So, um, in terms of what they actually are, I, I you know it's great. I, I think the more the more you have a cataloging of what's this kind of time in Hong Kong's history uh, and this sort of well, which is unfortunately a transition, um, the, the the better it is. Whether you know history can judge later whether some of them are too one sided or. Or whatever, but commercially, yeah, I, I don't think there's too much of an audience left for these films. I think special screenings of things is a great idea. Uh, mm. Tying in with universities and you know certain uh, cultural bodies is, is a great thing. But as a commercial concern, I, I think that's that wave is kind of peaked. I think you could see. Yeah, yeah. And outside of that, what we're seeing, I think, is very much affected by again, it's affected by the situation that. Yeah. that you know, we're seeing dramas and R- romantic old comedies. sports films. And <laughs> <like>. <laughs> True, uh, yeah. sports yeah. underdogs, and yes, <laughs> yeah. There, there's not, there's not much good coming. Um, and there, I mean, some of these films are, are fine, but whether we're talking about stuff like Far, Far Away or uh, Table, I mean, Table of Six, all these films are fine, but they're they're just classic sort of very middle of the road films about people being nice and everything mm. and there's nothing wrong with that but that we're, we're not seeing variety in it. Uh, and I think that's why yeah, apart from the very occasional the very occasional like Warrior, Warriors of Future you know <sighs> great film movie. great film surprisingly <laughs> surprisingly a great genuinely a great film I wish I'd been able to see it in the cinema because the special effects are you know like when The Wandering I'm not going to digress too much but when The Wandering Earth came out like the effects were were great but they were great by like China standards uh, Warriors yeah. of the Future effects are genuinely fantastic I mean, I mean they're not like Avatar level but they're really really good um, glad it's on Netflix but would have loved to have seen it in the cinema um, would it have sustained a release? no nah. nah. very almost certainly not but it's a surprisingly very good film and not very long either so anyway but yeah the, you're right it's only the very occasional film which sort of steps outside of that <sighs> nice genre the genre of nice or whatever we'd call it and you know as we know ourselves there's really not much coming up uh i mean there isn't actually physically many films coming and they're all pretty much in that bracket uh so far unless there's something's going under the the radar and there's still lots of ones which just haven't appeared like um well sons of the neon night uh so soy chang's new film about kowloon walled city whatever it's going by now it's gonna be interesting to see if that comes out Mm. Uh, i've not heard it's not but it, it finished production a good few months ago so it's probably still in post-production but mm. um, depends depends entirely what tack they take with it I mean Limbo did make it out but that got out just before you know all the problems with yeah uh, all the problems were happening so I'll be very interested to see what what happens uh, with I think it was, it was just called something about Walled City but um, you know because he's you know, he's a great director so we'll see but yeah very un, very uncertain time coming for Hong Kong cinema very hard to actually finance productions now um, over yeah. there so we, we you know, hope as we know is you know for, for our love of Hong Kong cinema and focus Hong Kong fully support young filmmakers you know we, we never want to sound like those kind of uh, old uh, old old white dudes who, who just who demand Hong Kong cinema is basically what it was in the 80s or 90s and stuff like that I mean we've screened a lot of there's been some really great stuff before, you know, like Jenny's drifting and whatnot and everything. Yeah. So there's still really, really great talented filmmakers of that. You know, I really like that. It drinks to 
uh, memories and drinks choking and whatever it was. Yes, great yeah, film. Maybe it's a choke on, yeah, or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. Great film. There's still lots. There is a huge amount of talented young Hong Kong filmmakers and stuff. And uh, it's not, we don't have any ownership or right to say, you know, Hong Kong cinema should be what it was, you know, this kind of 80s and 90s or you know, like Infernal Affairs even or anything like. So it's completely recognize that. But it's just a fact that there's very, very little actually being made or coming out even in Hong Kong. Yeah. So we'll see. I think to, I think to kind of stick with that because that, mm. that kind of neatly takes us into kind of uh, the next topic. But, mm. you know, the, the you know we don't want to sound like those old guys, but actually that at the moment, <laughs> all those, that sort of the, the, the golden mm. era of the 80s and 90s, um, you know, and just into the noughties with Infernal Affairs, is... Um, it's, it's, it's doing very well in terms of home entertainment. It is finding a massive True. audience and it's, it's part one of the kind of bolsters of what we're seeing. <sighs> this resurgence from um, of, of, of home media. And, uh, and actually kind of, we can kind of relate that back to some of those other releases we're talking about from Mubi. Mm. It's interesting to see that some of those are actually not that far away, like Decision to Leave, are coming out on Blu-ray. And yeah, yeah, come true. Out on Blu-ray and stuff like that. Yeah. It, you know, not that, that long away. Mm. Um, so there is this this weird thing of actually what was almost felt like it was kind of disappearing. Suddenly, we're getting all these deluxe sets. I was, I was chatting um, uh, with someone who's kind of, is involved in the, the, the mm. home media industry, you know, kind of talk about what what is behind this. And, it does seem like it's it's the UHD format because yeah. it's so expensive that distributors realise that they've got to make each, if they're going to put something out and it's going to be a good, like, £30 or whatever yeah. for, for a film that's been available like a million and one times, that this has got to be the ultimate absolutely. version of it. I don't know, absolutely. Which is, which is yeah. fair enough. You want to be able to kind of get the ultimate format and go, okay... I'm going to get rid of my laser disc. I'm going to get rid of my DVD. I'm going to get rid of my Blu-ray. I'm going to get rid of my VHS. I'm going to get yeah. rid of my but it's, uh, VCD. But, it's, but I guess with these ones, at least, uh, I don't know. I mean, just in terms of what the human eye can perceive and see, like 4K is already, you can't see 4K properly. So, yeah. but, I, you know, I've got my, you know, my big TV, you know, my OLED TV stuff. And I've got the, you know, I've been playing and watching some of the UHD things. And it is amazing. Like the, the jump up for Blu-ray is pretty big. But I can't see there would be another jump up um, unless we start getting eye implants or something. Um, mm. But at the same time, you absolutely, you know, to pers- both to persuade people and to make people think almost like this is the end game. This is the ultimate. Visually, this is the ultimate for this. You know, if it's been remastered, if it's now in 4K UHD, then visually it's it's not really going to get much better uh, unless someone's done a piss poor job of of just putting it on UHD, which some of them are, to be fair. You, there, there is a yeah. big difference in some which are, you know, in the same way with Blu-ray, some of them were just basically the DVD. So, um, but yeah, for you, absolutely, like putting together like a package of stuff. So you actually think you're buying something for your library or something, you know, that kind of yeah. thing where you've yeah, got so all we're the getting extras. major releases. We've got, yeah, particularly um, in the UK, we've got uh, Master Cinema, Eureka, putting yeah. out all those films. Mm. We've got... Um, Arrow, who are doing things, they're doing lots of uh, Japanese films, but yeah, particularly their their short scope volumes. Uh, they're on <laughs> short scope oh, volume man. two, and as as I I heard yesterday, and I hope I'm not going to get any trouble for any spoilers here, but um, there is a volume three and a volume four um, that man. are going to be coming out, and the selection there is going to be a lot less fighty fighty and a lot more uh, obs- uh, obscure, which would be nice because we've seen all those yeah. films before. Yeah, we, I mean, we love a lot, lot, there's some great films. In the first couple of volumes, like like King Box from Fetish Exchange of Channel and so on, but yeah. we they have been released and released and released. Yeah, we've got eighty eight films doing all sorts of various mm. kind of editions of Jackie Chan films, and yeah. uh, Seventh Curse came out at last, and That's I still right. I am still actually a bit a bit miffed that they didn't ask me to get involved in either writing the essay or <laughs> um, uh, you know being involved in audio commentary or being interviewed, considering that I've been championing that film for about a decade <laughs> um, and getting a decent release of it, you know, and, and sort of Criterion who are releasing some of their films um, in the UK, which is including Film yeah, Affairs, yeah. but didn't include their release of the 4K of Rouge. So they're kind of picking it's, it doesn't make which ones sense. they do and don't. You know, um, And in the US, 
Uh, and so we did, we got this interesting thing where some of these films are being released by Eureka, like Running Out of Time one and two yeah. in the UK, and they're being released by um, Arrow in the U in the oh, US. Not sure. Yes, yes, okay. they're being released okay. by Arrow in the US, and it's actually the same version, but just because the yeah the, the distribution doesn't want it released by the same company in two territories. Um, Screen Factory, which I know you've been working with, uh, with Show Factory. With Jack- Shout Factory. <laughs> <laughs> They're releasing a lot of yeah. Jackie Chan stuff. Whoop, whoop. Mm, hooray. I oh, know, I mean, hooray. Yes, I love Hooray, it. yes. I, I love Jackie Chan. I love Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is, it, is, it, is, it is kind of bizarre. It seems to have come yeah. back. I, mean, I don't know what the, the full figures are, but you know, lots of people are saying that it's, it's become very healthy again. Um, I do think, and I, we might have, we might have spoken about this on the podcast mm. before, but there is there's a certain. It might be a quite a. There might be getting good sales for this, but it's still quite a niche audience of people who are buying these editions. And I think yeah, when yeah. it comes to Asian cinema, I do worry about the the age group, you know, because they're all our age, yes. you know, yeah. or, or even older, and you know, they're, they're, they're not they're not feeling so well. Um, no, no, they're true. probably they're probably buying these editions because they can't remember they've just just bought it like, or they, a few minutes ago. Yeah, or, or, or they're the, the ones who are just happy to own, you know, several copies of something so they can they'll actually compare them to see how they hold up. Or this one's got a different audio quality. You know, I, it, yeah, but absolutely. It is, it is it's this, very it is, niche, very niche. It is, and I, it, it, you know, and I'm going to make a kind of joke about it, but you know that 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 audience is kind of dying out, and I don't feel like these yeah. films. And some of them could. I think some of them could find new audiences, but I don't feel like anybody's making the effort. No, to there's no, absolutely. No, no, I completely agree to, with to, you. To kind of reach younger audiences and, and bring them in. In the same way, where, where I think you do with the, with some parts of classic cinema, and again, we're kind of, that will be what we'll talk about next, but mm. um, there is a bit more of an effort to, to bring people up to speed, although I think yeah. that's being shaken about a bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, people agree. Speak, but for people to appreciate Billy Wilder and Hitchcock, and yeah. actually, yeah, some of the some of those directors who actually did make great films. No, I, I, I absolutely watch. agree with agree with all of that, and it's yeah. So it's I don't, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, you know, one level, it is great news for for, for home media. Um, on another, I mean, just the way again, it's the kind of promotional aspects of it. It's it, it, even, it's not trying to find a new audience. So we are finding this stuff is. Yeah. It's just not. Um, yeah, it, it they're not. They're, they're not. It's it's if you know, you know, and if you don't know, well, you've missed out on the limited edition slip dates. I think. Basically, Which no, is, I agree. I agree. It, it's it is a shame because yeah, it's just not. It's not sustainable um, in that respect because, well, yeah, whether it's an age thing or or, or just people, there has to be a point where somebody's got ten copies of you know, an old Jackie Chan film and they've got it up to UHD and everything and then or one of the other ones like and it's and it's great. I think it is very good that they actually put the effort into these things because there's it's not no not educational is the wrong word, but there is there is a definite sort of angle for for actually putting enough stuff because a lot of these things you know, as, you, as you'll know, when you're researching some of the stuff, because we, you know, we've both been working on commentaries and things like that. But a lot of these things, films are surprisingly very little actually written out there, and there's almost and there's even less of it which has actually been brought together in one place. So I, yeah. I, I think there's definite value in in doing that. But even so, you have to. There has, there's going to be a ceiling where where there's. You know, especially since people like us do such uh, fantastic jobs of like covering everything. <laughs> no, no, joking aside, like, well, there, there yeah, is there's also, a limit. Also, I mean, to be fair, that's that's saying. what Easton Kicks was was invented for was about. Yeah. You know, I was I, I've always wanted it to be a, a site about bringing new people or bringing people who've seen a few films to yeah. kind of appreciate. I mean, my original tagline was, "Okay, you've seen Crouching Tiger. Well, this is where it all came from," kind of thing. You know, that, absolutely. That, that yeah. was that. You know, that, well, that one. You know, and that worked back in two thousand and two when the site started. You know, because oh, yeah. they're still fresh. Yeah. No, it's, it's, but, a, it's a noble, a noble attitude, uh, hmm. indeed, towards it. But yeah, it's how you. At the moment, yeah, there, there, as you say, there's no effort being made to try and push these to not not even to just younger audiences, but more diverse audiences in any way. I mean, they're just, they're preaching them to the choir, to the converted, you, you know, which is fine, you know, and it's great, I think, that these, the releases are, are are being done, I think, it's it's great to have these more, 
exhaustive additions which actually pull stuff together. Um, mm. And that's why, you know, I was kind of joking before, I said people add them to their library. You know, to an extent, yeah, you know, you're buying like an audio-visual audio, audio package. And some of these ones, they are, they're dredging up some quite interesting like archive footage, archive interviews, and new stuff recorded by guys like us, essays written by guys like us, video interviews. So you're getting, you're getting pretty much there's no other sort of sources of complete sources of information for some of these films so these yeah. i think it's great that they are coming together um in that way but it would be much nicer if it was all if it's it, there's no gatekeeping or only pitching it towards some audience there just isn't any pitching wow. to audiences yeah in that respect it's just they, they know a certain groups of people will just buy these and if they do another one in two years now they'll probably buy them again and and, and so on and so forth until they, you know, they they the depart this mortal plane, you know. But it's a shame. I don't know the answer to it, but it would be great if we were seeing more ways to sort of engage younger audiences um, with these films. Um, mm. You know, because then it, it 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 is always like a bit of a not a concern, but a bit of a shame that especially where there's martial arts stuff and everything. Like so much of the audience is. Yeah, the old, the older generations and the older and more sort of slightly more well off generations who can afford to buy these big editions um, and everything because they're not you know you, you you know they're they're absolutely full of features and everything but they're not you know they're not cheap or anything by any means so uh, it, it does feel like it's kind of reinforcing you know reinforcing the audience not on purpose but you know that's kind of a side effect of it I think yeah yeah we'll see we'll, we'll see mm-hmm. I don't know maybe the kids will start. I don't know, some influencer or whatever, you'll do a TikTok video and <laughs> who knows, man. I don't know, whatever the kids do these days. <laughs> so that kind of brings us neatly along to the Sight and Sound Critics Poll, the <laughs> top 100 greatest films of all time. Mm. Uh, full disclosure, I am one of the people responsible for this, so don't hate me, okay? <laughs> At least I think I am. As far as I know, my vote was accepted, but I, they haven't actually released... The, do, do they, the do they, so what do they do? Do they ask? They get in touch and ask you to vote on it, or they ask you to vote. Now, I maybe we, I mean we can get into the results of this. Yeah. I they what they don't do. They basically just kind of ask you for for for. Oh, but they can't. For, I just, for they, they, votes. they contact you specifically. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And get you to fill out a form mm. um, uh, with your votes and comments and whatever. What they don't do is they don't actually kind of give you any guidance on what they're looking for when they talk about greatest because right, it is quite a right. subjective, sub- subjective thing you know yeah, yeah. I mean you think about it in this way there are films that are your absolute favourite films I'm going to put that on all the time there are films that uh, you think um, uh, you, that you respect yeah yeah, the, yeah you know for what they do there are films that you think are, are incredibly influential mm. um, and you know for some people there are films that you want to put on that list because uh, you think they're the cool films to put on, otherwise yeah. you're not a real um, yes. film critic. Or, um, or, or, you know, yeah, before yeah. we kind of get into to the, the kind of selection, I mean, I, I will be completely honest in terms mm. of, um, you know, as somebody who, ha- you know, is, 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 is trying to have a career as a critic, mm. if I'm going to put my list in, it's going to be, um, and I'll kind of come on to this in a bit later as why I think you, you're never going to get anything concise about this. Um, mm. And the more people you ask, the less it's... You're going to, never going to get any kind of consensus. It's, yeah. it's, it gets worse. But, you know, you're, you're going to pick some things that you know will be on that list so that yeah. at least not all your votes are completely invisible when it mm. says, OK, this was voted for by X, Y and Z. Yes. Um, so, you know, there is a bit of a game in here. And, you know, mm. maybe that's not the greatest thing. But, you know... Uh, there are ways of being guided towards what they think. Mm-hmm. Now, also, um, I think a big factor uh, in what 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 comes across is I'm not sure um, how many critics are asked from across the world. I don't know how this works. Right. Okay. Um, and again, you know that that information once that's released on the on the BFI's website will be a bit more obvious. Yes. Um, I'm presuming most of them are, are you know, are are uh, speaking English. You know, probably as a first language. True. Yeah. Um, so in a sense, we're getting these cultural shifts, but they don't title it the top 100 greatest films of all time as voted for by mainly British-based film mm-hmm. critics. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there there is this kind of thing. So, I mean, let's talk about the selection because I know you've got some 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 views on this and I don't necessarily disagree with with some of your views but mm. um it was interesting to see 
uh, some things. You know, we, we, the, 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 the big headline was the, the jump for uh, from uh, the film being now number one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so you're taking, taking your time. Find, find a note. Read the, if you can get well, the Well, yes, I was trying to find where it was. So uh, in the 2012 <laughs> um, survey, it was at number 36, and it's left to number one, which is the film by... Uh, Chantal Ackerman, uh, yeah. Jean Delman, 23, Quiet de Commerce, 183, Bruxelles. Um, <laughs> from 1975. Um, and I have to say, I, I haven't seen that film. I haven't. Um, I've not seen but, it. Yeah. But there's been a lot of. Um, and this is why, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to sound. I, I, I don't want to sound in any way, shape, or form dismissive because I do think yes. what we see here um, in particular is there is a big shift for films. Um, you know, by film, uh, by women filmmakers and mm-hmm. by black filmmakers, which is absolutely great. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. And alongside that, I mean, I know you, you're a bit, um, you know, unhappy that there's a lot of the same names that we're seeing, but uh, there is there is some shifts around mm-hmm. um, uh, with Asian films in the, mm. the lineup as well. We've seen um, uh, Wong Kar Wai's In the Move for Love shoot up about 20 places to number five um you know meanwhile yeah the which, which version of which version of it is it <laughs> no no i mean I'll, you don't I'll, get to know you don't get no, no, to which version you i'll get on no, no i mean i'll get on but i mean that, that it, it's just a facetious comment but it ties well, into it. about ashes of time uh, well <laughs> but if someone voted for ashes of time would they best but anyway that we don't yeah, get yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah, but it ties you back don't spe- you don't specify which version. it ties back to what you to an extent it ties just very briefly ties back to what you were saying that there's not that much guidance um which i've seen other people saying as well so in the mood for like a one car way remaster um some of them were wildly different uh, in terms of the look, the audio, the edit, and everything, so you could be talking about a fairly different film. Anyway, th- th- I mean th- yeah. that's just just a side point which ties into what you were saying before. Sorry. I mean, I, so I mean, we also with Wonka Way, uh, Chunk Game Express is now on the list, which wasn't before, and there mm-hmm. are some there are some additional, um, particularly East Asian films here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know, the side we we've always, yeah, we we. We tend to always start with East Asian rather than Southern Asian, so we're not yeah, going to really talk about that. Yeah. Um, so we've got we've got a couple of Studio Ghibli films kind of making the list now. We have Spirited Away and My Neighbor's Story. They weren't in the list before. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got Tropical Malady uh, mm. coming in. Um, it was kind of hilarious. I did find it hilarious and actually quite predictable that suddenly Parasite... Um, is on the list, <laughs> you know, and and it's kind of like, well, Ugh. okay, but and, and I almost thought to myself, if the if the survey had been any later, we'd probably have seen decision to leave on the list as well because it's and those are the yes. sort of films yeah, that people would vote absolutely. for completely. Um, but it's like, no, that's not Bong Joon Ho's best film. That's not Park Chan Wook's best film. Why would you yes um, vote for that? So you know, I think you know, and I've got to say, I'm probably responsible for a bit of some of these placements. What we are seeing, I think. Mm. Um, I mean, there's some kind of real kind of messing up and, and down with some of this, but we've got these new films that have, have, have appeared. Um, some of them, uh, you know, not the best choices, I think, you know, not yeah. the best examples from even the, the kind of filmmakers that, that, that have been picked, but there's a lot of kind of shifting around. Um, and we are seeing, I know we are still seeing um, Ozu and Kurosawa and... Um, uh, Mizuguchi on there, you know, yeah, and yeah. actually interesting. Though those ones are being pushed down, and I thought it was a bit ironic actually that Rashomon got pushed way down the list. Yeah, that's uh, right. Into the forties, mm-hmm. considering that that's the next uh, uh, cinema release for one of the next ones. But for BFI, is putting they're probably, that out. They're probably not that. Cinemas big. around. Yeah, they're not best pleased about that, I'm sure. But uh... <laughs> oh, but. Oh. It, but I do think, I mean, the, the trouble is, so I know I, I, that in 2012 they pretty much doubled the amount of lists of people they were asking. Yeah, that's to right. 800. Yeah. And for this one, 2022, they actually nearly doubled it again to 1,600. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that's a lot of people. I don't know. And I... I, I, I've seen some things where the people are getting really annoyed, like, who are they asking? Why aren't these films in there? But that's... That argument in itself is never going to work. No, no, it's like Tower of Babel. The yeah, more yeah. people you ask, the less likely you are. Especially in a world where, actually, largely access to film has never been easier. Mm. Um, 
you're never going to get a consensus. And actually what you're going to see is there's going to be less and less of a consensus. I think what's interesting is that in terms of the kind of old school film criticism, there has actually been a bit of a shift mm. away from some of that. It's still there, but it's all getting pushed down a bit. Yeah. And I think you've got this little Venn diagram where there might be just the only films that, that are in common mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Um, and, I've, you know, for me it is, you know, partly because, okay, well, that, that film would be in my, my, my top... 20 my top 100 mm-hmm. um but i don't want to be completely invisible i, I know no no no, no no completely you, there's no point in cast i mean you're putting event horizon in there for example mm-hmm. and you know it, it just disappears like samuel scream into the ether you know no i i, I absolutely there's no point it, it's a that's why i, I mean i think it's, it's it is it is it's starting i think it, it, what it does prove is it in, in some ways it's kind of not really massively fit for purpose unless it's, uh, exactly you know, what, 100%. What, it, it's it's a you know i'm fine you could you could start to stipulate what they could be harsh about who those critics are and, and what credit credibility they need to have but is that the right way to go no i mean it's is a, it is it better to to give people better guidance on what they're looking for is it better to actually split some of these lists up into different sorts of lists mm. i think what would you know it might be one interesting exercise would be to see what what is the next what is the next 100 yeah yeah we, that would we, be where things start to open up because one. i know uh, most of my list was isn't on here, and I knew that most sure. would yeah. be. I'm not surprised. Like, yeah. I, but, but, but knowing that, that's why I made a few choices that would, yeah, you know, again, which is fair enough. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll is fair enough. Stuff. But I no, I, I, the whole it's just. I think if you take a step back from it, everything like that, let's be honest. Film criticism, sight and sound, everything to do with BFI has largely lost any revel, uh, relevance. Rather, um, it certainly is not seen by or, or respected by or known by as many people. This is an ex- This is, I think, largely an exercise in clickbait. I have, yeah. to, I have to be honest. I, I, I think sight and sound. I mean, it was. I don't know if that was something to that public knowledge, but it was on the verge of going under, you know, recently and everything. And it's, it's just not what this kind of film. The film it, it, for for quite a long time in general, sight and sound has been walking a very fine line between sort of old school, you know, like Pauline Kale style like film criticism. And championing what the BFI is screening, <laughs> to be honest, and then being sort of guardian snark, guardian reader snarky about some commercial films, um, and then just having like very very long articles on whatever director the BFI is doing that month. So the, it, it's been a long time and, since and, they've and had the, the relevance. The, the quality of those articles, I mean, I I, I haven't read it for for a while, but neither have I. Yeah. Um, but you know, it, 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 again, it's 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 very mixed on what or, what sort of audience they're looking for. Yes, you know, yes. something something written by Kim Newman, you know, you're always going to be on to a, a good thing. It's yeah, well, yeah, of course. Well researched. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, but some of the articles they were getting really were making very tenuous links. I'm not yes. talking about the article or no, 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 but really tenuous links specific. in terms of of television, in terms of the points they were trying to make. And yeah. they, they read a bit like. Um, uh, I don't want to sound terrible here, but they read a bit like a, um, uh, uh, um, a an academic coming out of a no, oh, absolutely, course, can, but, can, can agree you know. More. But that's not the same thing as an actual proper, yeah. um, edited magazine, even if it is absolutely. a critical magazine. Uh, absolutely, you know, no, it's it a film critics magazine. I've um, aimed at sort of cineats. No, I completely, um, com- completely, completely agree with everything you're saying, and that's the problem here is that. Is sight and sight and sound is putting forward, you know what they're saying. You have two ways of looking at it. I mean, they're putting forward like what they say is a definitive list of the top ten, the top hundred rather in a film best films of all time. They know fine and well that's incredibly passive aggressive language, which going <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's why it's clickbait. This is not ten years ago. It's not ten years before that where this kind of that language had smoothed over. But this at the moment is it's. They, they, that's why I'm calling it clickbait because they, they yeah. know they're, when was the last time Sight and Sound was genuinely considered as like a bastion of critical film criticism you know we're, we're not we're not even in the time of like Caius de Cinema I mean it's uh, the people who actually buy Sight and Sound versus the people who've got an opinion on the Sight and Sound poll I mean <laughs> you're going to have like 10 people who read it and then hundreds of thousands of people who have clicked on the article to see about it. So that, that that's and, the and also that's a, that is a that's a real shift away from you know I mean that that's part of it as well that that this has been very much done as an online campaign. Exactly. Whereas exactly. that, like in 2012, that kind of existed. 
in 2002 it yeah. didn't exist exactly you know, when they started exactly. it I mean they, and they, you know if you look at it context they started in 1952 yeah um, yeah obviously it was the magazine yes it wasn't yes. you know it, but there wasn't any of this stuff was none completely. of this was going on I, at all I, yeah completely um, so, so they, so they know is, what they're doing they know what they're doing with this when they you put it out there with a now that language is the language used around it is they know and they also they know 100% fine and well that certain people are going to get their backs up about seeing anything considered to be diverse or you know the you know the hated word woke or anything like that they know fine well it's going to get more clicks for them because they're they're going to push they, I don't even think so you know I've seen some people saying this is agenda led I don't think it's that I, I just think it's clickbait yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. trying to get they know this was a cheap and easy way to get attention for it and the other yeah, thing they know yeah. is that what you're seeing now is that where I suppose they've succeeded is a very large number of people who voted and are sharing it online and saying I voted in the sight and sound poll and so everyone's oh you know you can't escape it now it's, it's still yeah. still going on all the time and they know that as well. That's the, that's the reason they open it up. It's not because they're looking for more. They they open it up for diverse voices in a, in a slightly cynical way, and they open it up because they'll get it makes sense. They'll get people to, you know, to share it. I mean, that's follow. kind of the, the point. Is it's diverse, but it's it, depending on who they're going to. It's not going to be that diverse, and probably not going um, to be that diverse. You know, not 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 you know, not in real terms. Not you know, if you want something. If you want something that's global, then you yeah, can get an equalish amount of critics from all over the world. To make sure, and then see, and then see what happens. Absolutely, and, and, and that would and, be. And that's why they have that's this. That's, and that's why the, the, the calling the greatest films of all time, the hundred films of all time, is very passive aggressive gatekeeping. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's that disguised as clickbait, and I keep saying clickbait over and over again. But that, that's the same. Either way, it's clickbait, not. Clickbait. Click, click, click. And I did click it as well. <laughs> I probably oh, I clicked on it a few times as well. So they, you know, they win. I the, the press release they, as well. So I oh, I did. Those. That's mm. true. I read the press. Oh, so, and I clicked on a few. So they win at the end of the day. They they, 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 they've created a debate. Will it result in more people buying sound and sound? No. I doubt it, to be honest. It, it's it's not what it used to be. But the list, I mean, the list itself is just... It's, they know for, it, it's such a hard thing not to get dragged into being annoyed about, and they know that exactly. Mm. They one hundred percent. But it know is that. it is absolutely impossible to get any kind of consensus. <sighs> and the more there is out there, the more wild choices. I mean, last time they haven't released the, the, the what how many votes each film's got, but yeah, you know, by the time right, yeah. you get to the sort of the the late nineties, there are about seventeen votes. For mm, some of those mm, films. Mm. So you can imagine some of the ones that I've voted for might be, have one or two votes if I'm it, lucky. Exactly, you yeah. might be just off it. You know, or you know, as you said before, I completely agree. I think that's that's what we be in some ways more interested to see, like one hundred to two hundred. You know, see what yeah, films are getting. Yeah. That's where you might actually start discovering stuff. Uh, like yeah. intro, that's where you. Think, oh, great! You know, uh, Mister Haskins, who we know he's like into his like Jackie Chan films and stuff. He's recommended this one, or Kim Newman. Oh, this is an obscure seventies horror film. Great! I, you know, I know that's going to guide me to go and watch that. Yeah. There's a lot of value more in that rather than the, I mean this top 100 which is still mostly the same films it is not the same it is, well like I say it's all kind of it's, it's shifted, just jig, jig, it, it's jiggers shifted. around a bit but yeah. is there any value or difference in oh this has gone from like 40 to, to 53 I mean does anyone and you know the, I can't the see the other direction I think is, is more is more poignant I think um yeah, it's the upward. It's the upwards. I mean, yeah, and that's I think why the downwards is just you know stuff getting just kind of leaked probably you know, just pushing it down. It's... But that, that film number one. I mean, interestingly, uh, just... I mean this is not not connected to Asian film. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Blade Runner's gone up. Kind of randomly. And how many of these are going? I mean, I think <laughs> another thing which ties into Asian cinema, I guess, is the visibility and accessibility um, of so yeah. many of these films and. You know, now we we have this film whose name I, I can't remember, and number one, um, which I, I don't see how people have seen it. Janine Gellman, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's because it's not it's not available. I mean, it's because you said it's going to become available because big surprise BFI will start making it available. Yeah, they're, That's they're, a they're doing some shot. screenings and it's big shock be on that, BFI, right? Yeah. Very yeah. very surprised that that you know something BFI turned out is you know anyway that's that's just my cynicism talking but you know we it, there's such a weird skew within this of films where I genuinely and I've seen loads and loads of people sharing their top ten I haven't seen I've seen maybe one or two who who've put that film in there and I don't it's not you know, about being a good film or a bad film it's just, it's not an accessible film where are people seeing it are they watching it on 
I haven't checked if it's on YouTube, but you know, what, and what's the difference? Like people are seeing this in the cinema, people are seeing this on their laptop, people are, you know, sitting around with a few friends and what you know. There, there's nothing, and you, I mean, as you said before, you can't, you can never get that level of like detail where everything is consistent across the board for how people view it, what version they see, etc. It's it's not possible, but it's you know I, I I haven't seen the film, so I don't take an issue with it. Yeah, but yeah. I, I find it bizarre that a film which you can't just watch has come out at number one. That just seems like a bit of shit housing, as much as anything. Like, oh, this film is wonderful. Oh, great, let's go and watch it. <laughs> you can't do that. You should have been in. You should have been at this festival in Poland in seventy eight, where we all watched it together and we drank. You know, <laughs> it's it's that. You know, it's nonsense. And we have you have a mixture. Uh, for some of these new stuff which is really really obscure stuff um, and then just stuff which is new and, and I'd guess the, the new part for, for you know one car wise stuff doing better is probably based on the restorations yeah, you know yeah. coming out and uh, yeah I think with the Asian the East Asian stuff um, that that's kind of my problem not problem because you know this is it's, this is a, a folder all the whole thing but it's it's still a lot of other uh, sections, segments of cinema from different uh, different groups um, are, are bringing in new films, are really shifting new films. Whereas East Asian stuff is still it's Kurosawa, it's Wong Kar Wai. You know, there's there's such a very very limited number of things, which just says to me that they're not reaching out to, uh, as you said, whether it's people across the world or people from different segments uh, and everything like that. So for for East Asian cinema. You know, we, you know, we love Wong Kar Wai. Yeah, not Kurosawa's biggest fan, and I don't like Ghibli because you know I'm too old to watch cartoons. Um, you know, it's but you know what I mean though. It, it's it's just such a it's I put and I put them in the same bracket as I put say Hitchcock or something like that they're they're already a completely established. They, they've kind of it's not saying they're not East Asian cinema, but they are. So they transcended that like a long time ago. Yeah, they, they've yeah. been like you know critics' favorites, Guardian readers' favorites. They've been critical darlings, festival darlings the world over for so long. There's nothing in there which is actually digging into East Asian cinema. And if we're uh, if you're actually looking at the, the best hundred films of all time, it, there's such a very 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 small um, representation of the diversity and sort of broadness of East Asian cinema whether it's across different genres, countries, filmmakers, etc. It's just entirely focused on, on a handful of names who everybody's heard of. And that's probably just, just because, um, you know, we, we're in a, when we deal with East Asian Centre, we're always in this odd position of calling something a niche, where it's not a niche, it's a niche for us in the UK. But, you know, these are films which are all over the world for different countries, everybody else has seen them. But over here, there's still a niche. So people are not aware of so many of these films so okay well maybe we'll just put you know in the mood for love in there still a great film uh it's great to see it in there but it just doesn't feel like there, there's been any kind of deep dive into it unless as you say when we get to if we get to see 100 to 200 i'd wager that's where we'd start seeing a lot more uh of these films well, that's why i think out. it would be quite interesting and i, I yeah. don't think they'll 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 do that exercise but i'd be surprised i think but it would be i think it would be really interesting you know and actually probably somebody will um will go through the list once the critics are, are up there and actually try and... Someone does, something yeah. Again. yeah. I'm sure we're, we're, we'll see more analysis. And that's, again, where certain sound win, to be honest, because this is what... Well, whether or not they've actually brought in more subscriptions, um, I don't know. But in terms of getting the name out there, I mean, I can't remember the last time me and you actually talked anything about sight and sound. Or, <laughs> I didn't even know this poll was coming up. So it's... No, I forgot about it completely until... And it's such a weird, arbitrary year as well, like... To, you know, like 2002, 2012, 2022. It's just not, it's non, you know, it's kind of nonsensical. Other, anyway, anyway, I mean, I, it's, it's like, kind of, I hate it just because I've spent too much time thinking about it, talking about it, writing well, about it. Because it's done it now. Because it's quick. I know. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, my, my reaction has been your reaction. I mean, all, we can kind of close on that by saying that my reaction of calling it clickbait but not being able to stop myself talking about it or looking at the results analyzing it is exactly what the the that's what I wanted yeah and we've seen so many other it's people. a trap it's a trap <laughs> but we've seen a lot of people going into in my defense I suppose I would say we've seen a lot of people getting a lot angrier about it than I mm. have been like online and stuff um, and I, I don't I don't think that's 
I don't think that's founded because I, 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 I don't know where people are coming from. We should kind of wrap this part of the, the, the show. Yeah, up. But yeah. I don't feel I don't I don't feel like that's a very healthy thing to get into when we know it's it, you know it is just a folly. It is exactly it's, yeah, but exactly. But well, you know we find but, but an unsatisfying folly that's a, that's pretending to be six percent, but is actually three point two. <laughs> it's just not worth no, getting no, no, that no, head that, up about. I, I'd get more. <laughs> I'd get much more angry at that if you're singing them, sitting down the bells, having a nice sip, and oh, this is a great beer. Then after five, you're like. I'm not. I'm not really feeling anything, and then you go up and you and you suddenly show to me three point eight percent. That's what I'd be. Angry. That's what I'd be properly. I'd be ranting about that for years to come. Whereas this, yeah, I actually I think I've got it out of my system now. Uh, talking okay. about it like this, Whatever. so it, it's. Um, yeah, if if, if 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 anyone listens, we kind of have been ranting about this. Just just let it go. Let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely, definitely the right thing to let it go, or just. I don't know, go on a podcast and just <laughs> rant about it. It seems, it seems much less... I think part of the problem is as well, just like if people are writing not very well thought through social media posts, venting about stuff, because, you know, it, it's such a... It, it is kind of an emotive issue because so many of us are so invested in this stuff where so many people are invested in their own niche of cinema. So I can see why people get hit up. Um, and a lot of us are quite weird i guess in the film fandom world and everything so i can see why people get hell absolutely but some of the comments some people make then don't come out the right way <laughs> yeah and hopefully I mean, that's what i was trying to say yeah hopefully we've not said anything wrong in that respect uh, i i would actually rather watch that three and a half hour film about a woman making toast which is at number one i'd rather watch that than decision to leave <laughs> to be yeah, honest, I don't think that would be. I don't think that would be a bad choice. If I'm you know, I, I would. I would definitely watch that. But I'm not paying any money which goes to the BFI or Sight and Sound to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of, kind of getting to the end of the, 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 mm. the our chat about the year. Um, yes. Do you think there's a key takeaway, or success story, or point of interest from this year? Uh, Warriors of the Future came out. <laughs> no, no, seriously, just I, I, I do. I think that's that's probably the most interesting thing that this year for me in a way because that it was supposed to be starting film in like 2016. Um, you now spent all the time in development hell. That was supposed to be shot, finished, coming out years ago, never came out, and you know it's it's been a bit of a joke in a way like we've always been wondering what's happening oh you know we're, what what, we, what Hong Kong film should we screen this year oh maybe let's try and get Warriors of the Future ha 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 and then suddenly like from out of nowhere it's on Netflix and it actually turns out to be great uh, you know in, that, in a genre it's yes. a genre film Louis Koo's passion project oh man he, and he's great in it man he's just the, the chemistry when he, gives, when he gives when he when he puts himself in 100%, yeah. he is and he is and the two of them they have great banter like classic sort of Hong Kong bickering between them and everything so it's such a great film and I think like as well kind of what that represents not just like the level of technical ability um, and the special effects which are fine they are I can't say it enough man they, they are Avatar the you know the, the watering way is is the most mind blowing one this year for that but after that I'd, I'd say probably Warriors of Future is the only other film which I've seen the effects and been like Jesus that's much better than I thought it was going to be um, but it, it's just it's coming it's such a a weird outlier in so many ways because it's been made over so many years and everything is it really a 2022 film how did you know and coming as we you know we've talked about the state of hong kong cinema at the moment it, it's such an, a mad outlier uh, and it's made a lot of money over there as well which is great so it's it doesn't there's no lesson to be taken from it whatsoever because it's not something being repeated i mean as we say it's been production for six seven years so um so yeah i i, I guess that, that's probably that's probably my most sort of interesting thing. And, and apart from that, I think it's just been a bit of a, a downward slope for, for East Asian cinema this year for many reasons, whether it's still coming up COVID, whether it's mm. the sort of commercial knock-ons that had for cinema around the globe. I, I think everyone is still struggling to come to terms, you know, uh, with the, the shift to, or the balance between theatrical, streaming, SVOD, TVOD, everything. So... Uh, I, I, well. yeah, it's an interesting time so, and I think as Asian film fans mm. like we're you, you know we're we are still a bit more of a niche uh, and so like a lot of the sort of slightly more uh, or less sorry, film, films which aren't getting into Cannes films which aren't getting into the big festivals are, are just not really showing up unless it's the, the random odd one like the, the roundup or something like that um, so it's 
uh, there's nothing about that which makes me uh, fear for the future because at the end of the day we're, we're, these cinemas are perfectly healthy in their own domestic contexts so it's just what we're seeing over here and we're I suppose we're also like a slightly odder phase in, in the, you know in the old days we, we would probably be importing DVDs still and doing stuff like that whereas now the only way to watch stuff is um, <laughs> illicit means which I don't even understand how to do because I'm technically <laughs> I'm technically not quite there in those things and everything so uh, I'm seeing a lot less than I, I, I would and having a lot less exposure to stuff than, than I would um, I think because these films you know just I'm out of the phase of buying DVDs uh, I'm not downloading stuff on the Dodge uh, but less films are actually becoming available in other ways but I, I think things will sort themselves out mm-hmm. I think I think it's a, just the film distribution you know landscape across the world is going to figure you know finding itself finding its feet again and figuring out how you actually make a profit from films so um, there, there's nothing I don't think it's a great year at all but I, I don't think it mm-hmm. has any long term trends apart from mainland cinema it's probably going to get worse <laughs> that, yeah that, well, that, that's uh, my I mean, takeaway for the year I mean, my takeaway for the year, I mean, it's very much more uh, specific, but it, mm. it's been interesting to see um, the rise and rise of Michelle Yao. Uh, oh, true. Star yeah, was, she's uh, was, well. was, was the yeah. signing, but, you know, with everything everywhere all at once, and now she's in the, the Witcher uh, prequel. Of course. And the, all the various Star yeah, Trek, yeah, and yeah. like, it's been working on pretty, the, you know, she's finally, you know, uh, the woman of the year or whatever, you know, she's yeah, really, that's good. really... Uh, uh, Made her, her presence known, which is fantastic. You know, we've mm. been fans of Michelle Yeoh from right from way back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and also it's quite interesting to see um, that there are some uh, interesting bits of casting where and and, uh, and these this casting yeah, is seeing those actors recognised. So I mean, specifically, I'm thinking about um, Triangle of Sang- Sadness and Dolly oh, Newman, yes. yeah, yeah, who's been recognised yeah. for a supporting role in that, which is, mm-hmm. which is great. But it's and I, you know, I, I don't. I, there's not necessarily. I mean, it's positive for some specific actors, not necessarily for for cinema yeah. in general. But it is great to see. Great to see some some East Asian actors really actually kind of getting out there and and and, yeah, and being recognised outside of. Yeah. No, no, and, that, and I guess that's. I mean, that's in some ways is a more healthy, sustainable way of doing it. It's like seeing slightly more international, internationally minded productions who are open to to casting around from East Asia and other places rather than thinking everything has to be tied to a, a Korean wave or, you know, a whatever wave or something. So, mm. um, so yeah, that, that, you're right. That, that, is, that is positive. I mean, it is great with Michelle Yeoh and seeing, you know, more people turning up in films. Um, hopefully that's something we will see more in, 20, in 2023. So that's it for now. I hope you have a lovely uh, New Year's celebration. Don't forget you can find <laughs> yeah. all of our previous episodes on Apple, Amazon Music, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe now and you'll never miss an episode. <laughs> but for now, Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> Cheers.